Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro 16 inch laptop with the 12700H i7 processor and an RTX 3060 mobile GPU. As a creator, you might be wondering how good is this in Premiere Pro? And that's exactly what we're doing in this video. We're going to be looking at the live timeline performance of lots of different codecs. How good is this laptop? Can it actually edit? So let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Few important things to get out of the way first. Number one, if you haven't seen the actual benchmark video and the review or the unboxing and the configuration of this I'm gonna leave a playlist in the description below because we're gonna be doing a lot more than just one video about it because it's absolutely amazing laptop secondly I'm gonna leave the link for this laptop in the description below if you want to purchase it this is an affiliate link which means that I will get a small commission with no extra cost to you so if you do want to pick it up I appreciate it the commission helps me to you know keep this channel going third of all I've got this on the screen over here there's another screen connected that where I'm going to actually record this Premiere Pro. So the Premiere Pro is being recorded through this HDMI out and that's only a 1080p screen. It shouldn't have any more like strain on the actual performance of the laptop. Shouldn't take anything away. And then on the laptop screen, what I'm going to see is on this side, you'll see the task manager and then we'll see some other things going on there. We're going to see the GPU, CPU, memory usage. And then on the right side, we're going to have hardware monitor so we can see the temperatures of the CPU. We can see the temperatures of the GPU and then the CPU clock speeds on the top over there so we can keep an eye on it all the time. The laptop has three configurations. Uh, if you press function and Q, you can go to, as you can see, quiet mode here and then press it again. It goes to auto mode and then another selection and this is the max performance mode. So when the power button is red, then that means that this is our maximum performance now. If you do use any of the other kind of, you know, settings there, not the max performance mode, you're going to see a dip in performance. This is the maximum performance as well as if you plug the power out you're not going to get the full performance of the laptop but this is you know the maximum configuration and last of all i have upgraded the actual ram of the laptop to 64 gigabytes of ddr5 and i'm using the kingston fury impact ddr5 4800 megahertz ddr5 ram so if you want to you know check that out i'm going to leave that in the description below if you don't know how to upgrade it you can find the video in the description below as well so then let's start first of all here we have some uh, mirrorless camera codex and editing that this is 8 bit 420 60 frames per second hisha 264 and as you can see the timeline performance is extremely extremely good like i'm scrubbing through the timeline is very very good as you can see even the decode it goes all on the xe graphics of the intel i7 12700h processor so the actual graphics inside this laptop cpu is pretty much the same as the uhd 770 on the desktop side except it's got more computing power the integrated graphics on there which is the xe graphics has more compute units but the same media engines as far as i can tell as you can see there's two media engines in here so that's why the timeline performance is extremely extremely good even at full resolution 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 4k 60 frames per second look at that absolutely no problem so if we do press play as well you can see zero frames dropped on the timeline uh, the video decode is like hardly doing anything. CPU is pulling only 34 watts there. No problem at all. Like, it's just completely fine. Bear in mind, I have quite a heavy color grade on there as well. That's why you can see the NVIDIA GPU quite a lot used there as well, because the NVIDIA GPU is playing back the color grade there. Now, this is 10 bit and this is 420, but this is H.265. 24 frames per second so if we play this back here you can see that the video decode on the timeline scrubbing is extremely smooth as well we're still at full resolution and the color grade is on and you can see that the video decode is um on there it's playing it back on the igpu media engines extremely extremely smooth if i press play you can see it drops down to a little bit to there and the nvidia graphics it's all pulling it back it's pretty pretty good i mean no problem playing this back. Moving on to 10 bit 422, 30 frames per second. Okay, so this is quite a heavy coder because that goes all on the CPU. As you can see, CPU now 
100% utilized, but the timeline performance is still extremely smooth. Like, it's smoother than on the Threadripper Pro that we just tested out uh, a little while ago. 64 cores, just the CPU alone is like four times the whole laptop cost in here. But this is, honestly, I'd say this is smoother. It's extremely, extremely smooth. I've got no issues here. I'm gonna put the color grade on here as well. Still the same, absolutely fine. I'm gonna press play now, see if we're gonna drop any frames. You can see it's all going to be played back on the CPU there. CPU is going to be doing the hard lifting on this, but <laughs> guys, it's completely fine. Now, this is A7S 3 This is 10-bit 422 at 25 frames per second on the left. And then this is SI. So this is all intracodec on the right there, which means that it's just less compressed, easier to play back, but still with a color grade. So the 25 frames per second you can see on the timeline is a little bit choppy, but Honestly, even the big like desktop size PCs are playing this back exactly the same. So I've got no like performance issues over there. If you go to the less compressed one, as you can see, it's still 25 frames per second, but because it's less compressed all intra, it's very, very good to play back. Now let's press play, see if we're gonna drop any frames. Okay, we did drop two frames, but as you can see, it's not a continuous drop. I'm happy with that. If it continues to drop frames, that's when it's bad. Now moving on to all intro. I'm just going to pause it for a second and pray, press, press play again, just so we can see if it's going to go yellow there. But it looks like we're playing it back. Absolutely no problem. Okay, let's move on. This is A7S3 10-bit 422 60 frames per second. So same codec, but now more frames per second. It's H.264, so this doesn't have hardware acceleration. Let's put the color grade on as well. Timeline performance, choppy. It's quite hard to play that back. So let's press play, see what's gonna happen. Okay, I did drop some frames at first. Nine frames, but can it keep up with it? The Nvidia GPU is doing quite a lot of work there. 78, 77, 75 gigabytes used. But it's not dropping any further frames. As you can see, if I kept pressing play, zero frames dropped now. Honestly, I'm very, very impressed. If you want to edit this, you completely can. Now this is A7S3. This is 10-bit 420 4K footage and H.265, which means that it should be accelerated on the iGPU, as you can see over here, yeah? It's 50 frames per second. So the timeline performance is extremely, extremely smooth here. Our laptop CPU has hit 100 degrees there. If I'm pressing play, No problem. GPU temperatures are completely fine. The CPU has gone a little bit hot, running at about 70 to 80 C. Uh, I haven't put anything underneath there. You could put something underneath to make the airflow a little bit better, but I think people will use this laptop this way. So that's how you will be editing on there. Now you would probably see a small, small, small increase in performance if you don't have the external uh, display on there, but Honestly, it's within the margin of error and um, according to my previous testing, not that much to actually make a difference. Now this is Canon R5, H.265, 60 frames per second, 10-bit 422. Usually if you don't have the iGPU on your you know, device, as you can see over here, we've got the XE graphics is playing it back there. Usually that will be extremely, extremely hard to play back. As you can see, we are dropping two, three frames, a few frames there, because this is really, really hard codec to play back. As you can see, our decoders are very much maxed out over there. The Nvidia GPU is 72% used. So we are playing it back. We're dropping a few frames here and there, but I wanna know the timeline performance. As you can see, it's so, 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 so smooth. Much smoother than Threadripper Pro. Threadripper Pro was struggling with this, but the hardware, this just shows how good the hardware decoding actually works. Have I been saying encoding? No, hardware decoding of the footage. 
This is ridiculous. Absolutely amazing. Now, a little bit more Toffee Codex now. So this is Canon C200 4K 60 frames per second Canon RAW. It comes from this Canon C200. Let's have a look at the timeline performance here. It's okay. It's pretty good. I'm going to press play. Usually what happens here is that... Oh, look. Can't quite play it back. It's struggling here. So here's where I usually see the 8 performance calls struggle because when you play back RAW on any of the devices, the more performance calls you have, the better it is. That's why like Ryzen 9s with 12 and 16 calls, you know, performance calls are absolutely unbeatable for the price at the playing back RAW from 4K onwards. Because as you can see, our CPU is absolutely 100% there, throttling down probably as well, 97% ridiculous if we take the color grade off let's see if it changes anything still still dropping frames and 100% CPU usage so that's not the issue so raw codec a little bit hard here 60 frames per second this is red raw 4k and this is usually quite an easy codec to play back very very smooth timeline performance is very smooth over here let's play so we can see if it drops any frames As you can see, no problem at all. This is not a very hard codec to play back on any of the devices. Now, this is 120 frames per second. This different codecs, H.264, 8-bit, H.264, 422, 10-bit, and then H.265, 420, 10-bit, and then H.265, 422, 10-bit. So I'm gonna press play. Most likely it's not gonna be playing it back. I'm gonna try to use the timeline performance first, scrubbing. I'd say it's okay in terms of timeline time performance, but it's as good as it's going to get, really. If I'm going to press play... Yeah, it's a bit of a chop fest. Can't quite track it here. Interestingly, here now, it's using the NVIDIA encoders instead of the iGPU encoders to play this back. Sorry, decoders because it really thinks that the NVIDIA decoder is better at doing that. Now we went to 422 10-bit, so that should go all to CPU, as you can see, boom, yep. And now we should go back to the iGPU. Let's have a look. Yep, iGPU video decode. Playing it back there. So it's an okay, you know, to uh, edit uh, 120 frames per second. I just make sure that if you use this laptop and if you can choose the codecs, choose one of the codecs that is hardware accelerated if you don't mind like the picture quality difference. This is 5K Red Roll. Let's press play, see if it can play it back. Nah, not really. CPU 100% used and we're struggling. So I'd say stick with 4K and mirrorless cameras codecs when, when playing this back. This is Red Raw 6K. I'm going to press play, see if it can play it back. Yep, dropping lots of frames, as you can see, completely choppy there. CPU 100% used. And interestingly, look at that. The SSD is 100% used as well. Trying to read it back from the SSD. That's very interesting. Looks like you do need like a fast SSD to play this back as well. But I, my SSD speeds are like 13 gigabytes per second. Yes, like 13,000 megabytes per second write speed or read speed and then 10,000 megabytes per second uh, write speed, which are ridiculous speeds really. But still the SSD gets used whenever I press play here, which is interesting. Look at that. I'd say red 6K, you know, give it a pass. Not very good. This is B raw 6K, screwing round very very good two b rows on top of each other no problem three b rows on top of each other no problem let's press play here b row is easy codec to play back we are dropping some frames here as you can see probably all right doing some of this let's try it with a color grade as well Timeline screwing very, very smooth. When you press play on a single 6K B-RAW footage here, it is dropping a few frames, actually. Constantly dropping a few more frames than what we should be playing back. So when using the RAW, 
the CPU power can't quite, um, you know, crack it. This is Canon R5 8K. I'm just going to press play at half the resolution. I don't expect much to happen here because this is very hard codec to play back. To be honest, I'm super impressed that it even plays back this much of it. So Timeline Scrubbing is actually quite okay for half the resolution. This is Red Raw 8K with the color grade. Let's try scrubbing first. Very, very smooth. Super happy with that. That's half the resolution. Let's press play. It's doable, but it's not perfect. We've dropped 81 frames. So Timeline is kind of, kind of fast. But I guess if you're doing 8K Red Raw, you probably wouldn't be getting this laptop for that. You'd get something a bit more powerful. Let's press play on a 12K, quarter of a resolution. Can't quite play this back. Yeah, dropping quite a lot of frames. Let's put one eighth on. Interestingly, can't quite play this back. So now we've done the test. Let's have a look at some of the results here on hardware info. Our maximum CPU package was 101 degrees. So it did thermal throttle it a little bit. The clock speeds here are pretty okay as well. Maximum we hit was about 4.6 gigahertz on the P cores, E cores hit about 4.3.5. And GPU was very good on the wraps. Look at that. GPU hotspot temperature 79.3 degrees, temperature 74 maximum. I'm completely happy with these temperatures. So then, in terms of Premiere Pro editing, would I recommend this? Now the only thing wrong with this laptop is that it's a little bit loud with the fans you have to have it plugged in if you want the full performance but other than that i think this is an insane laptop for performance for video editing especially if you're doing mirrorless camera footage or if you're like content creator on the run the intel xe graphics inside the cpu plus the actual rtx 3060 they combine together beautiful video editing experience because you have the graphics power to do all the color grading and so on and then you have the encoders of the nvidia gpu nvenc and then the media engines from the igpu that can work together in premiere pro one works and then the other one the program and the hardware they're so clever they know which one works better as you can see some one of the like 60 or 120 frames per second it switched up over to the nvenc encoders because it knew that they're like kind of better at playing that back at the same time the XE graphics has more codec supported for it for the Intel QuickSync which just is best of both worlds. So do I recommend this laptop for video editing? Oh yeah. This is the laptop to beat for video editing in 2022. Insane performance, 14 cores and an RTX 3060 in there. Absolutely beautiful. If you do want to pick up this laptop, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below as well as the RAM I used for this if you want to upgrade to 64 gigabytes because it does make a huge difference in Premiere Pro or in video editing when you decide to do that. Thanks guys for watching, likes and subs and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <music>